As the Secretary General mentioned this week to the General Assembly, racism is a deeply rooted evil. It transcends generations and contaminates societies. It perpetuates inequality, oppression, and marginalization. Our duty as a responsible global citizen is to eradicate it. Over 5 million people, a billion people, sorry, over 5 billion people don't have any meaningful access to justice. In Europe, I was looking at statistics and one out of three people of African descent experienced some form of racial harassment in 2019. 73% would claim the same in the United Kingdom. And it's probably not different in the US either. So my first question to the panelists is what the panelists themselves have experienced of discrimination in the workplace in their own careers. Sanda, can I start with you? Thank you, Paul. And you know, it's a really reflective question. Uh, as I started thinking about, um, you know, how I'd respond to this, I have to say that, you know, the, the issue that we want to discuss around racism is truly, truly systemic. Because much as I'd love to start by answering this in the workplace, I think we need to go back to even some more fundamentals. What happens in the education system? What sort of what sort of discrimination you have, you know, as you come up as a black woman? Um, I have to say there's so many elements and there's so many barriers that I reflected on as I get here. But be that as it may, you know, let me let me just talk about about the workplace. And I I reflect on a couple of 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 situations uh, past where really as, as a black woman entering a room, it's, it's often seen that you could not possibly be, you know, the head of team, the head of delegation. You must be there as a, in, as a supporting role. Uh, perhaps you don't necessarily have the full world view of what the issues are. Um, I've sat in meetings where to be very frank, Paul, um, you know, you're mansplained a lot, you know, your, your view is there, it's, it's the technical view and you, you have the full mandate of an organization to, to make a point and represent and, and take decisions. But that is glossed over and it's glossed over, quite frankly, for a white male counterpart who might be in the room. You know, I've also been in meetings where as a black woman or as a woman, I see it, it comes in and the expectation is you will take the notes you will, you know, support passing the refreshments around. You know, as a, as a black woman, relatively young, I have to say, Paul, it's not simply the race. There's a gender dynamic that comes in. There's an age dynamic that comes in. And it's, yeah. it's a challenge. It's a challenge to step into to meetings and to workplace settings where there's not full awareness and full appreciation that, you know, genders are equal, races are equal. And what brings you to the workplace is your intellectual power and the capacity and the merit that you have to hold that role. So, you know, when we look at racism and workplace discrimination, for me, it's not simply hate. It's, it's the denial of opportunity. It's the denial of participation. It's ignorance. It's lack of access. It's apathy. There's many things to challenge apart from a simple dynamic around you know one race versus the other that honestly has been my my lived experience around racism in the workplace no thanks for the honest feedback and as you say it has all these aspects to it and ultimately boils down to us fighting for these basic values of dignity and respect and equity and compassion for all of us and in all of its dimensions Angela what about yourself yeah, I can really relate to some of the things that uh, Sanda talked about. Um, I think here, and in my experience, the notion of implicit or unconscious bias has really been something uh, that I've experienced uh, outside of work and in my profession. And those kinds of issues can lead to you being excluded from work opportunities, excluded from an inner circle uh, of people who are decision makers, uh, I experienced uh, the things that Sonda talked about where you're coming in a room and say, I'm, I'm an attorney, so say you're dealing with opposing counsel. Uh, they're sort of saying, you know, well, when, when is the other side's attorney going to get here? And you have to say, well, that is me. Uh, and watch sometimes a look of surprise on their face. Um, I feel fortunate to not have experienced overt or blatant racial discrimination in the workplace. I certainly have outside of the workplace. And as we know, things you experience outside of the workplace come into the workplace with you uh, and you carry that with you. Uh, but uh, the notion of, of 
wondering whether you were excluded uh, due to your race or gender or wondering uh, whether uh, your performance review is attributable to some type of bias is certainly a burden, I think, that uh, many black and brown people carry, especially when we're talking about a corporate work environment. And I'm fortunate to be at a place that is working actively to, to address those things. And I know we're going to be talking about that in a little bit.